الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد النبي وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى آل بيته كما صليت ربنا على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My brothers and sisters in Islam, it was a Monday. It was a Monday on the month of Dhul Qa'dah. And the year was the sixth year after the Hijrah of the Prophet and the companions to the Medina. It was a Monday when the Prophet وسلم, came out to the companions to share with them something he saw in his dream. And his dream, he saw that he entered Mecca and he made Umar and with him were the companions. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was so happy with this vision that he couldn't help but share it with the companions in the very morning or the very next morning. And you know how much the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved Mecca. That his heart was attached to that land. And you know that when the, when the Quraysh pushed him out of Mecca, when he left, he stood up on a mountain and he looked over Mecca with his tears rolling down his cheeks. And he said, by Allah, you are the most beloved part of the whole entire world to my heart. And if your people did not chase me out, by Allah, I would, not have, I would have never left. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw this, he went to the companions and he shared this with them and he made a decision. The decision was that he was going to make Umrah that year. So he gathered what he needed for the journey, and with him was a group of 1,400 people, 1,400 people, decided to go to Umrah with the Prophet ﷺ. So they embarked onto the journey, and with him was his wife, Ummu Salama radiallahu anha. He decided to take her to Umrah with him that year. So they went and they embarked on a journey that was blessed because the destination is blessed. And then they reached Datul Hulayfa, a place between Mecca and Medina called Datul Hulayfa. That's where they made Ihram. That's the Miqat. When they made Ihram to get ready for the Umrah. And then they continued on their journey until they reached Al Hudaybiyah. When they reached Al Hudaybiyah, the camel, the she camel of the Prophet وسلم, stood, sat down, and wouldn't move. And then the companions started, started prodding that camel to move. And they started saying, hey, hey which is the word that they use for the camel to move on. And the camel just did not move. Then they said, well, this camel is somehow good, something. And the Prophet وسلم, said, this is, not, this is not like this camel. This camel has been blocked by the same way that blocked the field, you know, the elephant. So there is something big. So what he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stayed at Al Hudaybiyah and he sent Uthman ibn Affan. He said, Listen, Uthman, go to Mecca and then go to Quraysh. And this is what you do call them to Islam, first and foremost. And then tell them that we came here to make Umrah. We didn't come to fight. We don't have any ammunition with us. Our intention is just to make Umrah and go back home. So Uthman ibn Affan went radiallahu and he told Quraysh exactly what the Prophet said. 
So Quraysh somehow caught Uthman. He made him stay. And then a rumor started going around that Quraysh had killed Uthman. And the Prophet ﷺ got worried. And he was sitting under a tree. And then he thought about the matter. Then he gathered the people and he said, listen, something big may happen or may have happened to Uthman because these people, you know how they are. He said, well, listen, if something happens, I want your pledge of allegiance that if, if they are to fight us, we get, we get ready to fight them back. And they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we gave you the pledge of allegiance that we are with you all the way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Surah Al-Fatih, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Fatih, Allah is so pleased with the believers when they gave you their pledge of allegiance. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ And Allah knew what was in their heart means. Allah knew their sincerity. فَجَعَلَ مِنْ دُونِ ذَلِكَ رَدْحًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made an opening for them. But Quraysh actually they thought about the matter. So what they did, they sent one of them. His name is Suhail ibn Amr. And they sent him for something very important. To have a treaty with the Prophet Because Quraysh had enough of fight. And so was the Prophet And so did the Sahaba. Because fighting doesn't avail anyway. Security is essential for the establishment of the deen. To worship Allah, you have to have a safe, sound environment. You have to have security. You have to have peace. And that's why the Prophet when he migrated to Medina, the first thing he did, he established peace between Aws and Khazar. These two tribes that never stopped fighting one another. Why? Because tranquility and security and peace is very essential to the worship of Allah. If there is no, if there is no security, how can we come to the masjid? How can we worship Allah? How can you go to your work without fearing for your family? We cannot compromise on peace and security at all. That the Prophet ﷺ never compromised on us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعِ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفِ Because worship under fear is not worship. Worship under circumstances which now are not secure is not worship. You cannot have the flavor, the taste of worship. You have to have peace and security and tranquility. That's why the Prophet ﷺ did not compromise on this in any way. So Quraysh wanted to have a peace treaty with the Prophet ﷺ, and they sent this man, his name is Suhail ibn Amr. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, we want to have peace with you, but we want to have peace on certain conditions. This is Suhail from Quraysh saying, we have conditions for this peace. The Prophet said, okay, what are the conditions? He said, number one, that this year there is no Umrah for you. You go back home. But you come next year if you want to make Umrah. Then the Prophet said, okay. He said, then the second one, we won't have any war between us, any fighting for 10 years. The third, whoever come to you from us. For example, somebody from Quraysh becomes a Muslim and he runs away and he reached the Prophet Sallallahu He said, anyone who comes to you from us, you must return him to us. No questions asked. And anybody who comes running away from you to us, we won't give you back. What kind of conditions are there? You know? 
And the Prophet ﷺ didn't object, he was just listening. And then he thought about the matter. Then he said to him, well, if that's the case, let's document this. You know, for the sake of time, because I'm given only 10 minutes. We want to just, you know, but this, this, this should be a lecture of an hour or so. But anyway, to sum it up, the Prophet ﷺ said, this must be documented, let's write it down. So they sat down, the Quraysh and the Prophet ﷺ and the companion, they sat down at the negotiating table. And beside the Prophet ﷺ was Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the Prophet ﷺ told Ali, Ali, you write down. <laughs> And he started, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Oh Ali, write, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Then Suhail said, Wait a minute, stop. Don't say, he said, فَأَمَّا الرَّحْمَانُ فَمَا أَبْرِمَاهُ He said, the Rahman, the merciful, I don't know who we're talking about. Well, he's a mushrik, he doesn't. وَلَكِنْ But, you write, بِسْمِكَ اللَّهُمَّ Then the Prophet ﷺ said to Ali, right, Bismillah, come Rabbi. And then the Prophet ﷺ told Ali, right, Uktub, Bismillah, to Makal Uktub, Hada ma qaba alayhi Muhammadun Rasulullah. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad the Prophet of Allah, is approving. Then the man said, wait a minute. For you are Muhammad, but not Rasulullah for us. I don't recognize you as a prophet. Don't write Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, but you write Muhammad ibn Abdillah. That's what you write. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told to Ali, said, Ali, write it down. Then Ali said, no. Ali radiallahu could not write it because he knew that this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can he write something for which he believes? How can he go against his belief in writing and document it and it will be written there? He could not do it at all. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him to do it three times and he couldn't. So the Prophet snatched the paper from him and he wrote it by his hands sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the treaty was written, the Sahaba, the companions, did not like the, in, the incident at all. Because this is a way, this is, this is total compromise. This is a sellout. The Prophet is selling out. But the Prophet وسلم, has a vision, has a long-term vision. He is Rasulullah. For him, for him, stopping blood from being shed is more important than a few words written on a piece of paper. You gotta weigh down the things. The hurma, the, the, the blood of a Muslim is more important than a few words that could be written on a piece of paper. Here we are going to stop the, the, the bloodshed, the fighting. We want to ensure peace and security and tranquility for our families, our children. And this is how we can worship Allah without any fear. And you know that the Prophet ﷺ always, was always for security and for tranquility, always. You know, during the first Hijrah, he told the Sahaba, some of the companions that were persecuted in Mecca, he told them to go to Abyssinia. He said, migrate to Abyssinia, go there. And they said, why? Why Abyssinia? He said, you go there because there, there is a king who is so just. Although he was not a Muslim. And Najashi back then was not yet a Muslim. Yet he was just. He established justice. He honored the people. So the Prophet وسلم, saw this as a great quality for the believers to take advantage of. If you are in a secure environment, then you have to help protect that security because it will ensure your proper worship. You can't compromise on that. Look at the Prophet So anyway, the matter has been signed, the document has been signed, and the Prophet وسلم, went to the companions. And the companions were wearing their ihram because they came for Umrah. And they had their hadith, you know, their animal sacrifice, they had their hadith with them. Then the Prophet وسلم, went to them and said, listen, go slaughter your hadith and then shave off and then take off your ihram. 
And they all did like this. He didn't listen. He said it the first time, the second time, and the third time, no one of the Sahaba landed him an ear. SubhanAllah, this is dangerous. Man man Allah Rasulah faqad. Allah, whoever obeys the Prophet, obeys, indeed obeys Allah. Wa Allah, wa Rasul, obey Allah and obey the Prophet. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ You know, no believing man or believing woman will have any other choice when the Prophet and Allah and his Prophet decree something. It has, uh, but the Prophet was calling them to do this and they didn't listen. They stopped. They stopped. So the Prophet ﷺ decided, So the Prophet The Prophet turned away and went home. You know, he didn't argue with them, he didn't insult them, he didn't say why did he why? Because Bil Mu'minina. He cannot hurt them in any way. So he went home. And his wife, Umm Salama, was there. Well, listen, I mean, look at this, this incident. This is a great matter that the Sahaba are disobeying the Prophet by not listening. Normally, what should the Prophet وسلم, do? I'm, I'm fine with this issue. What should the Prophet وسلم, do? He should go to Salat and ask Allah to help him how to handle this matter. Because the Sahaba are not complying. But he didn't do that. He went directly to his wife. And he said, Um Salama, listen to me. You know, I just signed a treaty with the Quraysh to stop the bloodshed. Good for the Muslims. And then I just told the, the companions to go and then slaughter their sheep and then the sheep. And no one listened to me. And then Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she turned to him, she said, you know what, this was very hard on them. You know, you know how much they love you and how much they love Allah and how much they love the Islam. They just couldn't, this is too much for them. So, you know, give, give them the benefit of the doubt. But here's an advice. Why don't you go and you slaughter your sheep and you shave off and remove your ihram and I'll tell you, if they see you do that, they will do the same. The Prophet ﷺ didn't wait a second. He went out and he did exactly as his wife told him. And this tells us how the Prophet ﷺ respected the shuwa. And he took the advice from who? From his wife, Umm Salama. It's a great story to reflect on, brothers and sisters. And it has great lessons. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand them and implement them in our lives. Inshallah, we'll finish with the quiz today. It's number 12. Uh, this is the first one. Quran. Please uh, point out the surah and the, 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 the verse number. Uh, the verse is, in their stories, there is a lesson for the people of intellects. This Quran is no intended tale, but a confirmation of the previous books, a detailed explanation of all things, guidance, and mercy to